I know that you also encourage tracking, like tracking the connection. And I think that's so genius. Could you share a bit about that? Oh yeah, that's a great question. I don't know if anyone's asked me that in that way before. Yeah, and I know for a lot of women listening to this series, you know, they tend to be more anxious in relationships, right? So when that happens, often um, women for coming from that place tend to be tracking the connection a little more closely, right? So we think, oh my gosh, we had this great time and I haven't heard from him all day, or we haven't heard from him for two days. If you're just kind of starting out and dating a guy, whereas the man might be going, okay, we had a great time. That was amazing. We connected. Now I'm focused over here because men are really single focused. They're just focused on what's right in front of them. And I was just talking to a client the other day. I was like, we could actually learn a lot from men and the way their brains work like this. Because if you can kind of train yourself to only focus on what's right in front of you, that can really heal this whole thing in a lot of ways. So when a man shows up, when he's what's right in front of you, great. He gets your full attention. You're opening your heart to him. You're, you're letting him come close. And when he's not there or, or when he's not contacting you, if he's not showing up on your phone or if he's not right in front of you, I always say like, what else is right in front of you? There's a whole world in front of you, but we can get lost in, in these fantasies that we have for, for these men that we have strong feelings for. And it's really important to kind of rein that back in. And, and that's one way to not get ahead of yourself in this tracking the connection, if that makes sense. Oh my gosh. Yes. That is so helpful. I think that's really spot on. I completely agree, right? Like just having that mindfulness of like, what other areas of my life can I feed and what areas of my life fuel me, right? Like just maintaining a really healthy kind of wide variety of activities and connections and things that you can go to when maybe some of that insecurity is starting to crop up or some of that like needing reassurance or you know, rereading texts or whatever it is. It's kind of like, totally. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's funny when you mentioned that just brought this up for me, that's likely what attracted this guy to you in the first place. Right. One kind of like thing I hear from a lot is women where the man came on strong for a little while, right. He was pursuing her a lot at the beginning, but then something shifts. Right. And then he starts to kind of back off and pull away. Maybe they're in a long-term relationship and he's just acting distant. It's just not the same as it used to be. One thing I always ask is what was different? You know, if he was pursuing you at the beginning, what was different in the dynamic? And a woman almost always says like, well, I probably had more of a social life. I was going out with friends more and it can be easy to let some of that stuff go. So it's really important. To, that's when your masculine energy can really be in service to your feminine energy, like building up this amazing life for yourself outside of the relationship so you have other things to focus on, you know, other than when was the last time he texted me and getting all, you know, zeroed in on that, right? Oh my gosh. Yes. That is so key. That is really, really key. And I know that, um, you know, we both have some great approaches for slowing down when you do kind of catch yourself in those patterns. And I know a big one for me is just maintaining, you know, curiosity and compassion. So kind of asking yourself, like, what's going on here, really? Like, what is the pool? <laughs> I love, I love what you said curiosity. It's so important to come from a place of curiosity because we can take everything so personally. We can place meaning on a lot of things. It's something I haven't talked about too much, but we tend to want to place meaning on everything in terms of like, oh, he took, you know, three hours to text back. That must mean that he's not interested or maybe he's talking to other women or what, Sometimes a guy's just busy or he's, he fell asleep for, you know, and we can place all this meaning. I get questions every day from women asking me to help them figure out what a man means. And it's just not helpful to do that. So it, like, this is something I've said before. I haven't talked too much about it, but I would love to see what you think. I always say you can save yourself from so much anxiety just by simply becoming an observer of what a man does, right? So you just want to watch what he does see how that makes you feel. So if he's treating you amazing and his, his energy is coming towards you and it feels good, that's fantastic, right? This is kind of what you were talking about, zooming out and becoming an observer. If something doesn't feel good, you know, your mentality should just be, okay, I'm, I'm really noticing that this guy isn't really showing up as much as he used to. Maybe we're not on the same page rather than going straight to beating yourself up, blaming yourself, rereading all those text messages, replaying the last conversation you had. So that's one tip I give my clients, uh, become an observer of what a man does 
not what you think he means in every situation. What, what, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that too. I completely agree. I think that's beautiful. Yes. Um, especially because if we are looking through the lens of, you know, putting a man on a pedestal or having him be this like missing piece in our life, then we are going to perceive what he says, what he does, like through that lens, we're going to think, Oh, look like that, that creates meaning around this idea that I want to have of him. And when we can step back and see like he has his own needs as well, and it's not all about us <laughs> saying that out with a lot of love, <laughs> um, you know, but it's like, he's his own person as well. And what does he need? What is he looking for? Right? Like when we kind of take the focus so much off us and look at like, there's another person here, <laughs> it can be helpful to just kind of tease some of that out. Yeah, absolutely. Like the thought, the example comes to mind, the guy cancels a date because something happens is, you know, family member gets sick and we can take it so personally and get mad when it's just like, sometimes things come up. Of course, if a man's constantly flaking on you, just, just get rid of him and move on. That's not a good, he's not going to be a good relationship partner, right? If he doesn't like follow through and, and do what he says he's going to do consistently. But sometimes things come up and it has nothing to do with us. Most of the time, a man's mood doesn't have anything to do with us. I would say maybe like 95% of the time, but we can make his mood our fault. Like, oh my gosh, something's, you know, this is all going down the tubes. I did something wrong. And then we get, we start to panic. We start to lean forward. We might get extra um, nice and understanding and start over-functioning. And that just pushes him further and further away. So yeah, try not to place so much meaning on anything, especially uh, I would advise to not take things so personally right? Would you agree with me there? Absolutely. I think that's a really important distinction you made that, of course, you know, if there's a pattern of him pulling away or, or just flaking, right? Like that's not what we're talking about, but really this could be a, a fantastic partner. And if you are so quick to make assumptions and, and be nervous about it, then that's going to push him away before you can even really see what potential is there. So it's kind of like slowing down to know what, what you're actually working with. Yeah, I love that. I totally agree. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let me see, you know, I know you also talk about, this is something I really love from your work. You talk about understanding the difference between real chemistry versus just what feels familiar based on kind of our biology and upbringing. Oh you, man. Yeah. I'm like, how much time do we have? I could talk for probably three hours about that because it, that was certainly my pattern. It is for so many women who, who are kind of drawn to this work. Yeah. We can place a lot of meaning kind of keeping with this topic of placing meaning on things. We place a lot of meaning on this instant chemistry. And if you have a, a history or a pattern of attracting and being attracted to men where things don't really work out, your feelings of instant chemistry can kind of be hooked up with the wrong kind of man, right? Um, like I used to be attracted to the emotionally unavailable man. A lot of women are attracted to men with anger issues or addiction issues or, or just there's some obstacle that's preventing them from committing to the kind of relationship that the woman wants, right? And it's just about safety. I don't know how deep you want to go into this, but I have so much to say. I, do you want me to give you like the science behind it or, or anything? I mean, where would you like me to take this? Because I have so much to say on this topic. Yeah. Yeah. I think just, you know, helping kind of give an overview of like, how do you know the difference? Like, what are some of the patterns that people might have to know like, okay, this is just what feels familiar. So I need to like, back away from that. Totally. Okay. Love it. Yeah. This is really important information because this is, this can be something that we don't even know that's happening. We're not even aware of it. So yeah, that feeling of instant chemistry, those like obsessive highs that you have with a man where it's just never going to work out or he's not treating you well, or he keeps abandoning you or hurting you that can be hooked up with the wrong kind of man. So your subconscious mind is what's creating this spark of attraction and really pulling you towards what feels familiar, right? So have you ever heard that quote, like when we're faced with something that's familiar versus what we say we truly desire, we'll typically choose what feels familiar every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, we can say consciously that we want this great relationship with a man who's really available and generous and want, you know, ready to commit, but we can, our subconscious can create the spark of attraction over and over with men who kind of feel like home to us, 
who sort of fit right into what love felt like to us earlier in life. It has a lot to do with what our parents and caretakers were like. So yeah, and so we can, and then we can just get all swept up in the instant chemistry. And then what happens, we start ignoring red flags, kind of dismissing our intuition, even when like these alarm bells are going off, like this guy would not be a good relationship partner, or he's, you know, interested in other women still or something, right? We ignore those red flags and we kind of accept unacceptable behavior or bad treatment because we have these strong feelings for a guy and then we might put labels on like, well, he's my soulmate or my twin flame when really a lot of times it's just our subconscious pulling you towards what feels familiar because our subconscious is really committed to survival and homeostasis. It just wants to protect you and keep you safe. It's not like your prefrontal cortex, which makes decisions consciously, like this is a good situation, this is a bad situation, right? Your subconscious doesn't do that. It just goes, you've survived this. You know, if everyone's here, they're alive, that means that they've survived everything that's happened to them in their past. So a guy comes along who feels like home to you, he fits right into all those old wounds and patterns, your subconscious wants to say, you can handle this. This is known and familiar. This is a dance that you can do. And it pulls you in that direction. So that's instant chemistry. Uh, I hope I explained all that correctly. I know I just said a whole bunch of things right there. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm really, really glad that you touched on all this because this is a huge concept that I... I really feel a lot of women on the summit are going to resonate with. And so that's what we're talking about here, right? When, when we're quick to put someone on a pedestal or create a fantasy, it's often what Helena is speaking about. Oh so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very different from, I'm just, I feel like I'm talking so fast because I'm so, I have so much to say on that topic. It's so, you would not believe, I, well, I'm sure you, you, <laughs> you know, it's all <laughs> you see it's such a common situation it's really just universal right so real chemistry is the opposite of that real chemistry I believe can be created over time especially as women right if you've ever for everyone listening if you've ever like been with a man or you had like a guy friend who you weren't really attracted to at first but then you really got to know each other and you got really comfortable with him and he made you laugh and you found out that he was really like ambitious and sweet and caring our feelings of attraction can grow or, and then, you know, maybe he does something that you don't like, and then he doesn't seem so attractive anymore. For women, we can kind of turn it on and turn it off. So real chemistry can actually be created over time. Real attraction. It's not going to just burn out after the first couple months. And, you know, one way to do that is by starting to open up to a man who's not like your normal type starting. And it's easy to do this with men who aren't your normal type. who You don't feel that instant spark with, right? Opening yourself up to them and just seeing how they love you and accept you exactly as you are. They don't want to change anything about you. And then it's like this, this amazing sort of upward cycle where you start to love and accept yourself. And then you're expressing certain things to him, you know, talking about how you feel in certain situations. And he's like all in, he's loving it. That's one way to develop this real chemistry and actually change the kind of man you are attracting and attracted to. You can really do that, right? Like I just see it happening every day. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so glad you shared that. That is so on point. <laughs> that is so on point. That's, that's really the basis of what I share around like the attraction blueprint process is take note if, if stable, secure guys tend to seem boring or you just don't feel like there's a spark there. You know, this is exactly what Helena is describing, like giving them a chance and allowing yourself to deepen a connection and maintain that curiosity, right? Like don't be so quick to dismiss well, could be a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. I mean, my clients who end up with the most amazing guys who have had this history, which most of us have, right? They all say the same thing. It's, it's amazing. They all say, I am so attracted to my man. I've never been so attracted to anyone ever. I'm way more attracted to him than any of those other guys who like lit my fire initially. Right. Um, but at first I didn't really see how great he was. At first I wasn't super attracted to him but I gave him a chance and he got to me, like he won me over. And like we've been talking about, it just, it works so easily that way because we don't put those guys on a pedestal, right? We're just naturally leaned back. We are talking about feminine energy earlier. We're naturally leaned back with those guys. And it's like this beautiful thing that just flows so effortlessly. So that's my hope for every woman out there listening to this. 
Oh my gosh. Yes, me too. I hope everyone is letting this sink in because this is a total game changer, what we're talking about. That's awesome. Helena, we just have a couple of minutes left. Um, I know that you have a free gift to share with our audience. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what that is. Yeah, absolutely. So that's my three keys to attract the man you want. It's a report, like a PDF report you can read. It's also an audio training. I know some people like to read, some people rather listen to things. So there's both for you. And yeah, it's all about what we've been talking about. It's great if you're single, looking to start off on the right foot and attract that right man for you. Or if you're in a relationship, like I mentioned, your guy's been acting a little distant or pulling away, these keys will help reattract him. And I go pretty deep there. It's kind of like your subconscious drives everything we've been talking about. Like, do you tend to put a man on a pedestal, then want to convince him of how great you are <laughs> or what a, you know, how great the two of you would be together? You know, are you fast forwarding? I talk about slowing down a lot in there. Really, I shared a couple really helpful tools that, that I know have change so many like directions of certain women's love life. I get feedback on it every day. So that's free on my website, helenaheartcoaching.com. And you'll probably post a link as well, right? Yeah. So right where you are listening to this interview, there's a link to grab that gift. I definitely recommend it. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and Helena, I want to thank you again. This has been such an insightful conversation. I really hope this is sinking in ladies because this is going to change everything for you. You're welcome. This was so much fun. Yes, I'd love to hear any insights or anything that was helpful for, for your audience. And yeah, thanks for inviting me. This was so much fun. Yes, thank you.